Welcome to RailFans, I'm Shane Sege. Join us as we discover the Ottawa O-Train, Toronto Subway, and Montreal Metro systems together. Welcome to RailFans Canada, I'm Shane Sege. Joining me today is David Bellarive, and topic today is the Quebec City Tramway Project. Quebec City has been talking about building a tramway to enhance, improve the transit experience in this major city in, in uh, the upper region of Quebec been talking about it since the earlier proposals around 2008. It's been a lot of back and forth, whether it be about the technology, about the routing, which has become a little contentious, about the financial backing from the different levels of government. So let's start out about talking about a uh, bit of the history in Quebec City. Quebec City previously had an electric tramway in the mid-1900s. Uh, so David, can you talk a little bit about this? So, um, if we go back really to the beginning in the uh, basically 19th century, so the city had a horse-drawn uh, tramway throughout uh, what you would most people would consider to be old Quebec, so the older part of town. Um, it was converted later on to an electric tramway, which was again the same same kind of area. So, uh, mostly for the older part of the cities, you wouldn't see it go all, uh, all the way to the same extent as what you people consider Quebec City nowadays. Um, it was basically closed in 1948. Everything was torn down, so there's uh, no visible trace of it if for anyone going to walk in those part of the cities. Uh, it was pretty much replaced by buses, so that's when you saw the, um, the formation of the earlier transit authorities in Quebec City that uh, like with bus service and then, uh, which pretty much brings us all the way to today. So. Um, the major the major elements people need to know about how it works for Transit Quebec City. It's managed by the RTC, so the Réseau de Transport de la Capitale. Uh, they have three tiers of service. So they, are, uh, they call them basically le bus, uh, just regular buses. It's your local route. So it's uh, from point A to point B, uh, mostly to connect you to the major hubs. Um, you have express service, which is more of a commuter kind of network. So uh, those routes are mostly from the suburbs uh, to bring you to the main employment of, so mostly saint foy in the west and uh, the old city, well, Parliament Hill and uh, the parliamentary district, let's say, in the east. Um, and the third kind of service is the high frequency, uh, so metro bus, they call it. Um, it's higher frequency, higher capacity buses, so that's where you would, um, it's mostly a yes, think of it as more of a way to connect the different hubs throughout the city, so it follows. It uses some, in some places dedicated guide, uh, sorry, not guideways, uh, but de dedicated lanes. Um, it, but on a lot of the, on a lot of the route, it still shares uh, the same uh, roadways as uh, the cars. So obviously, it's it's prone to traffic, and um, you're gonna get the same kind of situation we've seen in Ottawa before the implementation of the uh, of line one. So um, what they call the um, the train bus effect in some sort. So basically, um, sure, you have dedicated infrastructures on the most, uh, the air traffic sections, but the problem is that obviously a bus has a certain capacity. So you can, you're just going to have them stacked together at some point. So they're just going to be back to back to back. It's not efficient. It's um, obviously it's, uh, <laughs> it doesn't have the same capacity as a dedicated right away with um, any kind of uh, dedicated vehicle. So, um, like you mentioned, tramway proposals, like the modern ones at least, go all the way back to 2008 with um, basically the, uh, the election of the uh, former mayor, Regis Labombe. So that's been a project of his for uh, as long as he's been in a political office in the city of Quebec, actually. So um, it, it, it was proposed to be at some point a tramway, a bus rapid transit, a dedicated bus rapid transit system. Uh, there's been a lot of contention on all those points, as you were mentioning. So... Uh, that's pretty much the state of affairs as of right now. So exactly, just bus services throughout the city. There's no, there's no rail link. There's no uh, nothing else right now. So we're talking about Quebec City, and Quebec City is predominantly uh, a French-speaking uh, region. Um, yeah, of course. We, and when we use the word tramway, that's more of a Quebec uh, a French word. We're, we're mostly talking about streetcars. Yes. 
uh, it, versus, let's say, an LRT or like the Eglinton Crosstown or the Finch West or the O-Train in Ottawa. This would be a network of streetcars uh, traveling yeah. from point A to point B. Yeah, I think to put it in perspective for uh, the people in Ontario, I guess it would be, um, I think the best example you can compare it to is uh, Ion in uh, Waterloo and uh, uh, I, I think like that's so it, it, it's pretty much um, like it's a streetcar system. Obviously, it's going to have dedicated infrastructure, but it's um, uh, we'll, we'll go more in depth about it. But it's not it's definitely not uh, dedicated like it's not off street. It's really integrated in the current environment of the city. So um, you're, you're not looking at something to the same extent as you would maybe in the, uh, like it's not a subway. It's not a light rail. It's really a streetcar system. So it, it just as you say, yeah, tramway. Tramway is the term they've been using in Quebec for um, for whenever they talk about the project, they clearly make a distinction between it being a tramway and not a light rail system like we see in, for example, for example in Ottawa. So um, it, it, it's it's definitely important to point out because it's also been a topic of quite uh, some debate. Uh, some people in Quebec would argue a tramway is not big enough to uh, uh, support the f the future of the city. So some would rather see uh, higher capacity system. So uh, either a uh, uh, a light rail system like uh, maybe closer to what we see in Ottawa some would go as far as to go with a full-on metro system so a subway uh, similar to what you see uh, line one well young line one in Toronto or if you go uh, any line in Montreal uh, closer to that kind of system and there's been also some pe people mentioning a monorail it's uh uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, of, I, I don't know where that idea came from, but uh, <laughs> sure, try to integrate that in the city. It's been, uh, uh, it's already enough difficult enough to convince people that the tramway is the right option. So let's blur everything even more. <laughs> and it, it, it's worth pointing out that that plan for a tramway has been pretty much in motion since 2008. Like, um, it's really an. an impressive investment in the terms of uh, in terms of transit for Quebec City like it's it's one of the largest capital project the city is ever gonna see at least for the time being so um, there's been the city has done a lot of studies to decide that tramway was the right fit uh, there's been internal audit well internal studies obviously they, they might tend to prop the proposition that's already supported by the city but there's also been uh, external studies that were done that compared uh, the viability of either a tramway, a uh, light rail system, a monorail, and a metro, uh, they pretty much came to the conclusion that a metro would be a really good option if it wasn't for the fact that it would have too much capacity. And obviously, there's the whole cost element. We're talking probably five to six times the amount of money that would cost to build a tramway. So, um, And for perspective, uh, the current proposal is, is valued at $3.3 billion. Uh, that's the number that came out uh, late 2019, if I recall correctly. It might change because they're still like they're still in the uh, contract award phase. So who know, who knows what's going to happen in, from that side of things? But it's been um, the main point of going with the tramway then uh, compared to the other system is to establish a backbone. So to connect the two main like to connect the city from uh, west, east to west. Uh, so from um, we'll talk about the, the 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 project maybe like more specifically, but it's really it's really meant to be a backbone that you can build upon. So like uh, previously they used the term réseau structurel. So um, I don't really have a good way to translate it in French, not that in English, not that I think about it. But um, essentially the the way to look at it is everything is going to connect to the tramway, similar way to what you see maybe in Ottawa with Line One. So the local buses are going to feed into the hubs. The hubs are going to f feed into the tramway service, and then the tramway is going to get you between those those main hubs. So it's bringing capacity where it's mostly needed, to, and also to uh, liberate uh, more vehicle buses for uh, the other routes, so they can expand service without needing to build uh, ad additional garages or uh, infrastructure that might not be logical to fund at this time for the city, given uh, its size and, cap and uh, the transit system capacity. So you brought up a good point about how the system is envisioned to work. So what you talk about is a hub and spoke system where you have all the different lines converging on uh, hubs. Yeah. 
and from those hubs, that's where the tramway would operate from to join people to other hubs or stations to then reach other buses to reach their final destination, yeah. wherever it may be. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put up the graph on the screen there. It sort of shows a, a comparison that they had done between the different technologies that they had given consideration. So the tramway obviously was the best choice. Metro was a close second. They also looked at light rail. So uh, again, something like Ottawa, something like uh, you would see in, in uh, other cities that are using that as a mass transit system, rapid rapid transit, and also the monorail. The monorail is interesting that they would look at that, like you, you mentioned, because um, typically monorails run with rubber tires on a yeah. single beam guideway. And that could prove to be challenging with snowfalls that are often seen in Quebec City with pretty harsh winters and weather events. So um, that could actually create more issues than anything to see a system like that being elevated and having issues where they have to evacuate and take people off potentially rather frequently. So as interesting as it would have been to have seen such a system being developed in Canada, of which there yeah. really isn't any, unless you count the uh, the mini rai, mini rai in uh, La Ronde. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, if that definitely still works, even. Yeah. <laughs> I think it does. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's good that they're not going with that. Metro would have been interesting because, like in Toronto and Montreal, it seg it would if it was done completely underground, it would be segregated from weather events. Again, yeah. weather and winter are very harsh in Quebec City, as are in Montreal. So removing that aspect creates a more reliable system, uh, no matter the weather. And, and again, like how you see it in Montreal, the buses can be snared up, the traffic, the cars, the vehicles, the roads can all be blocked up, but the metro is still smoothly sailing without issue underground. As long as it has electricity, it's good to go. Again, that would be cost prohibitive in such an old city like Quebec City. Quebec City is the oldest city in North America. I believe now over 400 or 450 years old. Uh, we're getting close to 420. So uh, 400 was in uh, 2008. So we're getting uh, 415, close to four, 414. Yeah. Getting old. So, so if, if you think about the age of the city and all the uh, legacy infrastructure underneath, that yeah. is hopefully documented and there probably is a substantial amount that is not there's a, a serious level of complexity in building something exclusively underground especially through the you know the parliamentary district the old yes. part of the city there that could present significant challenges from whether it be the ground stability underground infrastructure foundations or even um, archaeological remains from previous uh, settlements from uh, times long ago. So moving to something on the surface, then we talk about light rail transit. Again, dedicated guideway, segregated, separated, yeah. whether it's grade separated or level and it's fenced off, however it's done, you need the space to be able to do that. And again, once you get to the downtown part of Quebec City, it can be quite cramped. Yeah. Um, so space the tramway definitely, yeah. yeah. The, the tramway definitely becomes very interesting because it can integrate into the existing street network. Uh, they can create, you know, dedicated lanes for that, different traffic patterns to help prioritize the tramway to get through. And it allows it to be able to negotiate tighter turns than a more heavier vehicle would be able to handle, like a metro or a subway or a monorail or potentially even a full-on light rail system would be able to do in a city as structured as it is right now. And it, it's worth adding up also that um, a, a lot of uh, studies, um, well, those studies accounted for that, but uh, there's a lot of elevation change between the uh, older part of the city and uh, basically as you transition from lower town to upper town, um, it's built it, it, it's built in the rock. Like it's not, uh, it's not easy to dig a tunnel. So obviously um, if you're planning to do a tunnel along the entire guideway, uh, you're build it's really not ideal conditions to build into so it's doable there's definitely studies like the the it's been documented for a while it's it's doable 
there was already projects to build tunnels in that kind of environment, even in Quebec City, but it's just the logistics, the cost, the, as you mentioned, like the archaeological element, that's uh, a, a lot of it is documented, but not to the, maybe the extent necessary. So it, it makes the old, <laughs> it makes any of those endeavors one of, the, uh, like you cannot come in and say it should cost around that. It's going to be, it, it would always be a project that, you know, at least how much it's going to cost, but not how much it's going to cost in mm -hmm. the end. So. Um, tramway is probably the most viable option, realistically, po politically speaking and financially speaking, um, at, at least for the next uh, 15, 20 years, it's probably the most viable option. The elevation changes really, as you mentioned, are quite substantial, especially when you look at Honor yeah. de Mercier Boulevard, how it, it's very high up and how it, it really steps down. I mean, I don't think... That's something you would you would almost compare to uh, San Francisco and California, where you see the cable cars going up and down the hills. I don't know how efficiently or how safe it might be to have vehicles rail based going up and down that, if it's even at all possible with the grade. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty much impossible. In fact, like uh, that's that's going to be the only tunnel in the entire project. It's going to be to basically uh, try to create a grade that's a lot. Uh, a lot less elevated than what what you would have on streets. So um, basically, if you um, for those familiar with Quebec City, uh, <laughs> like you're really familiar on the street level, uh, you have uh, de la Couronne, which is basically uh, one of the main link between and uh, between the upper and lower town. So you have uh, which connects to um, Honoré Mercier, and basically what they're planning to do, like uh, from. Uh, from a design perspective is to have a tunnel that connects so with a portal at the base there and which will use a lower grade to connect to uh, Place du Ville and then the uh, parliamentary district to have the two stations which will be tunneled uh, stations on the ground fully uh, fully uh, isolated and then have it surface a bit further away so this way they can use a more progressive grade uh, throughout that section which they would probably be able to do the same thing with potentially uh, a, a metro, but with the metro, they would need even then. Um, uh, basically, the grade would need to probably be even smoother, and also the curve radius would be a lot more difficult to manage. So um, it, it would be a much more compli uh, com <laughs> complicated insertion to go from lower town to upper town. Um, at, at some point, the discussion about <laughs> I recall it was a proposal one time to uh, essentially build an elevator, so <laughs> a, a, a giant elevator that would get the vehicle from uh, lower town to upper town. But uh, obviously, that's impractical, I would say. So, um, not really good for frequency of service or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, that that uh, pretty much like the easiest way to insert it is uh, like it, it's going to be a tunnel regardless. It's just uh, a tramway is more is is easier to insert in, in the kind of tunnel they have the space to build, um, but also to be able to offer some sort of stop in the downtown area, because otherwise the grade would, the grade and placement of the tunnel would pretty, pretty much prohibit like any sort of station at Zoo Valley. It would be either uh, parliamentary or it would even then further up on parliament, in the parliamentary districts. So if we move on to talking about the routing of the tramway, obviously it's going to be approximately, as they're envisioning it right now, 19.3 kilometers in length, would feature about a 2.1 kilometer downtown tunnel. Uh, to put that into perspective, that's very similar to the downtown tunnel on the Ottawa O-Train, uh, just about 0.3, 0.4 kilometer difference. Uh, there'd be about 28 stations, fully accessible, level boarding onto the tramway vehicles there'd be two underground stations and the rest would be on surface various locations various sizes and they envision four transfer hubs it would go from le gendre to l'estimoville from the east to the west and uh, be operated with fully electric and a custom designed rolling stock of which we've seen some pictures that looks quite stunning with uh, very sleek lines futuristic it's definitely going to be something interesting to see. So let's talk about the routing and we'll kick it off with the downtown underground stop. So can you tell us a little bit about where these two underground stations would be located? So uh, basically the tunnel runs from De La Couronne uh, to uh, basically pretty much just before La Cartier. Uh, so 
Um, the two stops that are going to be on the ground is Dioville and uh, Colin Palamata. So uh, that's basically going to be for the National Assembly in Quebec. Um, so Dioville is, is supposed to be located pretty much where you have the current um, so there's a bus terminus at Duville. So this should be integrated towards there. Uh, that's at least that's a plan as it stands right now. So to have it would be a ground level access, and then uh, you would go to the platform level uh, below ground, which should be the uh, tramway station. So uh, the, they still expect to have some sort of bus service uh, on the surface. It's not going to be removed completely. They still need it for the local local routes. Uh, Colin Palomata is. Um, Physically speaking, it should be placed where you have a uh, current metro bus uh, stop. So that would be uh, René Lévesque. It's, it would follow the alignment of the street, which is the one that tramway is going to follow until uh, for quite a bit, actually. Pretty much should serve most of the parliamentary districts. So uh, the uh, Champ, uh, the, the, the Champ d'Assemblée, uh, it should also have for uh, most of the office space in, in this part of town, should connect pretty well with the people that need to go to Grand Allée, which is also more for touristy area, but also um, great for locals so that it, it shouldn't be too far from the stops already on the street there for the metro bus service um again fully underground uh, uh like it should be um temperature control so it should um like it's going to be pretty much an access just for the tramway as far as we know they do not plan to interconnect with other um buildings around it there is no such uh um underground city, if I can say it this way, in Quebec City. Uh, never has been. It's not really in the plans, at least for the time being. So uh, they would pretty much be like, if, if you go underground, you're going to the station. You can, you're going to catch a train. Um, in terms of layout, they don't really have much specifics as of yet. Um, my guess would be that they're going to do an island station uh, just because it requires less excavation, generally speaking, at least. Uh, so you would have one station to go both directions. So uh, you don't need to double most of the infrastructures to uh, to get to the platform level. So you would have uh, one bank of elevators, one, one staircase set, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, but again, the plans are, some of the plans lead to believe that they will be uh, side platforms. Some will say, some might suggest island platforms. So I guess those the, those details are probably going to be more uh, decided when the uh, uh, there's an actual proposal on the table, like um, from a, from a group that can actually build it. My guess is going to be island platform, but we'll see. Um, this should be also the highest traffic station, um, at, at least in terms of destination. Um, so what I mean by that is people that need to go downtown. Um, most of them, uh, if you live in the suburbs, uh, you take a bus to your main hub in your uh, your transfer hub in your part of town. You're gonna board the the tramway. I think most people are gonna converge towards uh, either the old city for if they work for the government in Quebec, or if they work for more uh, private businesses and stuff like that. They're most likely gonna use uh, one of the other transfer hubs, which is uh, Paul de Saint Foy. So that's uh, towards the bridges in Quebec City. So. Um, and the malls and the Chamay saint foy and everything like that. So it's really a busy area. Um, that's probably going to be the main the main two areas of traffic. At least that's what they expect on their side of things. Um, but the frequency, the trains are going to go from one end to another. There's no going to be sh um, there's no plan at least for short service. There's no plan for um, bypass tracks or anything like that. It's really going to be a tramway service. So. Um, we should expect uh, vehicles to go from one end to another all the time. Uh, and during peak time, they should... <laughs> during peak time, they expect four to eight minutes between trains, which is, um, I would argue, optimistic, uh, having, <laughs> having lived in that city for a while. But uh, on dedicated infrastructure, it's a lot easier to achieve. They're going to have priority at the intersections. And obviously, for the downtown segment, it's going to be uh, with the tunnel that should really help also for... <laughs> For to achieve some reliable service cannot be worse than what they have right now, to be honest. So it's good that we talk about the routing because that's, as you said and, and mentioned earlier, a definitely a point of contention yeah. with uh, the different levels of government, the different uh, political leaders that are trying to shape and decide how the tramway should be routed through the city, who it should serve, how it should be routed and where it should go. So the plan that you outlined right now is is the currently proposed plan. 
what other plans are being uh, put forward right now by by other uh, political leaders and, and parties? So um, basically, the plan, like you mentioned, that's the current plan. That's the one that the city is uh, basically. That's the one they use to get funding. So that's pretty much. Um, that's the one they used to get funding. That's the one they negotiated with the provincial and federal government. So that's pretty much what we expect at this point to be built. Um, previously, there was a proposal that instead of terminating at uh, Destimoville, uh, more towards Beaupar, uh, it would end in uh, upper uh, in the upper parts of Chalabou. So it would follow. It would go up the, uh, if I recall, the first avenue. Although. Uh, it, it was overall a longer uh, path for the service. Uh, they, they had multiple elements. So they had, a, um, in that plan, they were expecting to do a tramway, um, dedicated bus rapid transit, uh, like the uh, mechanical links. So like it was, it was, uh, and they were expecting to, to, to cause the same thing as the current proposal, which is optimistic to put it mildly. Um, there is also, um, so it, there was a municipal election this year in Quebec City. Uh, one of the opposition party uh, proposed uh, basically a fully underground network of two lines, which would uh, pretty much do from the parliamentary district to uh, to Saint Foy, and have another line that would go. Um, I, I'm blanking out on the exact line, but it would it would mostly serve uh, Saint Foy Cillery, which is uh, a bit further west. So after the bridges, when you get you enter in Quebec City from uh, from the South Shore. Um, this proposal was never really. This proposal was never costed by anyone else than the party proposing it. It's it. Honestly, it was pretty much just a, a, a political maneuver to like they, they've been. They they never sported the tramway as it stands. So their proposal was to go fully underground to obviously avoid the the impact of weather uh, to avoid um, sharing the roadway with other vehicles. But it's. It, there's not much else to say because all that proposal was a plan on the map, which showed where the stops should be and the kind of vehicle they would use. But it's 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 nothing further than that. Um, if we focus really on what's on the table, at least for now, um, I, I think it's the most viable plan we've seen yet because it's in regards to the project itself. It's it's funded. It's it's a project that has all the approvals it needs for, for, for it to be built. That's why we are in a, propo in a proposal request and, and the proposals are expected to adhere to the uh, to the plan we're discussing right now. So like the one from uh, Estimoville to Legendre. There might be some variations like uh, we could potentially see uh, a few stops being removed or a few stops being relocated a bit. But um, as far as of what the city is studying and what the city is developing, it follows pretty much the, the exact path we discussed. So we'll talk about the vehicles right now. So they're going to be uh, very similar to, let's say, uh, what we're seeing in Toronto with the streetcars. Yeah, not necessarily Bombardier, Flex City, or anything like that. Now Bombardier yeah. is owned by Alstom, so it'd be more likely Alstom if they were to go with that, or it could be Siemens. It could be any number of of uh, constructors building this. They're envisioning it being uh, fully air conditioned, have Wi-Fi service. Seating and standing, about 260 passengers, capacity per train, and about uh, 43 meters long. So to put that into perspective, that's about the length of a uh, Toronto streetcar, approximately, or one car length of the Ottawa O train, not when there's two, but just one operating single. So that, to give an idea of how long the trains would be. Uh, mentioned earlier, the design is really stunning. Lots of uh, um, lit accenting pieces to show off the angles to yeah. show off the the look it's going to look really futuristic which is very interesting for a city with such history and and uh, age to have something as futuristic as this but hopefully if they pull it off and have something designed such as what they're proposing and they're kind of showing us in renders it's going to look really stunning and it's going to be a very transformative piece of infrastructure that hopefully the citizens the residents the riders and the the ridership will really be proud of to have in their city yeah yeah so too um one thing to point out about the renders those are what the city wants them to look like um it's and that's a really important distinction because um 
uh, as much as I love those designs, I really hope they they actually end up being what's being done. Uh, as the city describes them, they should be a reflection of what the city aspires to be. And also, visually speaking, uh, because of a lot of the black, um, glossy black and uh, the windows on the outside, like it should... Um, they kind of wanted to act as a mirror of the city so that as it passes on the street it reflects what's going on around which I think is quite poetic in terms of a design philosophy I, I'm i really like I, I'm a big fan of those designs like I think it's um, it definitely modern it, it, it brings it, it would bring the city in a new new era for that regard um, as of right now for the vehicle so it's uh, they had a request for qualif uh, so they got qualified bidders to the surprise of pretty much nobody, uh, Alstom and Siemens are the two uh, the two principal bidders. It's worth pointing out that this is a redo of a previous bid, and the previous bid also had interest by Bombardier apparently. So that but that was done uh, before there was the uh, Alstom acquisition of Bombardier. So uh, that's part of why they did uh, a redo of the whole process. But um, as of right now, there's no indication the train should look any different than the renters. So, fingers crossed. I hope uh, I hope we're not going to get value engineering on that part of the design because I I, I think like the vehicles, especially in the open tramway system, like we're going to see, is really um, it, it's a statement about like I think the uh, how you want to integrate it in the city, and uh, I really hope they go forward with that. So we've talked about all sorts of aspects for the Quebec City tramway up to now. Let's just talk about uh, the progress thus far, what's to come, and what the timeline is projected to be moving forward. So they're anticipating construction start summer 2023. So that's in about a year and a half from now, hoping to have service open by fall 2028. You know, with a lot of different factors, pandemic, a lot of uncertainty, supply chain issues. We're seeing a lot of issues with these major infrastructure projects all across Canada and certainly all around the world. So, you know, fall 2028 would probably be seen as being very optimistic. It would probably be more likely 2029, 2030, or potentially a little beyond that. But it's definitely coming. It's definitely exciting to see that things are advancing, that we have requests for proposals out. As you mentioned earlier, Siemens and Alstom are the two major ones that are going to be bidding on it as far as the vehicles, the rolling stock. When do we expect to find out more about, you know, the proposals that are being put forward? When are we going to find out these, these details? And usually when we find out about this, we also see renders, uh, you know, more concrete design attributes such as location, station design, construction methodology. When do we expect to see some of this being released? So uh, at this point, we're pretty much in, it, 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 we're in the process. So um, if you go in the, um, initially there was a, a contract that was supposed to be a single one uh, that was launched in 2020, with um, uh, which was supposed to be approved in 20, well, decided in 2021. This one got divided in, uh, in the two segments we have right now. So uh, first one, rolling stock, as we mentioned, uh, the RFQ was completed. Uh, they announced the result um, just two weeks ago, actually, January 13 of this year. Um, so Siemens, uh, Siemens and Alstom, there are the two qualified bidders for the rolling, st for the rolling stock. Um, then they're pretty much working on the uh, on their proposals right now. Uh, the final decision is expected for the rolling stock by the uh, by summer 2022. Um, it could be delayed, it could be, um, but they're pretty much expecting it to be done by then because um, as we discussed earlier, the, the design is pretty much, the city pretty much want, know what's it, what it wants visually. So I think we're pretty much in deciding like, um, mostly from a cost perspective, we can do what they want. And if they're willing to compromise on uh, some elements maybe of design to, uh, to make it easier and uh, more financially viable. Um, the second contract is for basically infrastructure and maintenance. So that's um, basically to build a guideway to, um, well, to finalize the designs of the guideway, to build it, to maintain it, uh, to manage operations also for the same time. So uh, um, this one, basically the RFQ is in process right now. It was extended to the 22nd of February, 2022. That's when proposals are due for, quali uh, for to qualify bidders. 
Um, and then basically we would go in the RFP once more. Uh, this one is expected spring 2023. So um, in the timeline of things, basically the contract should be awarded then to start construction in uh, summer 2023 and hopefully have uh, entering service in the, in the fall. Um, we're pointing out also that the city is already doing preliminary work uh, because since the funding is pretty much awarded at this point, uh, some of the segments of the tram were pretty much set in stone where they're going to be, how they're going to be integrated. Uh, so they're mostly uh, working on utility relocation, road alignment for um, uh, certain parts that might need, uh, that might not be accessible during the construction. Uh, property acquisition in some parts of the city where they, uh, they need to uh, establish a, a right of way. Um, but also to enable obviously traffic to circulate during uh, because those those works are necessary they need to be done um for example they want to have what they call a stabilized structure be, uh, below the uh, the tracks so they don't want any utility cables or anything like that so that the only reason you would dig under the track is uh if you need to repair the tracks themselves everything else would be put uh up, up off the guideway if i can put it this way um so that's what's happening right now in some parts of the city. Um, as we get the construction started, then they'll proceed further on, uh, like uh, with the uh, with some other areas of the city. Um, also, obviously, because of the nature of the city, there is a lot of archaeological surveys that need to be done, uh, especially in parts that are not uh, built currently. So, um, a lot of the guideways on part is on pre-built environments, uh, mostly on streets, um, and uh, as you mentioned, like. Uh, the tunnel that's um, they they know most of the conditions they expect but they still need to do those surveys uh to document everything that's there um so that's ongoing there's been uh, a lot of progress from that side so um it, it, there's the, like if you live in quebec city you probably saw a lot of fencing in some parts of uh, of uh, some streets where they're uh they're pretty much just working on those things uh which might not be much visible like they're just gonna pave back on top of it like uh, for for most people it's just gonna look like oh they they work on some utilities that's pretty much what's happening so uh but real construction so uh hopefully summer 2023 great well Definitely lots to look forward to in this project. Hopefully we'll have some good news as far as the proposals in the, in the next year's time from now. Great to see renders, pictures, descriptions of how the stations are going to integrate, how they're going to look. It's definitely when things will really feel very real and tangible and definitely something to look forward to as the years progress and yeah. construction begins. So thank you very much, David, for helping us give a an overview on this very important transit infrastructure project in Quebec City, the tramway. Thank you very much, and we'll talk again soon. Pleasure as always. <laughs>